Hey guys, my name is Bryce, and for the last five months I've been living in this 1988 Dodge Ram B250 van with my wife Courtney while we've road tripped across the western U.S. And during this time all of our electrical power has come from a simple DIY solar system which I installed myself. So I'm going to go over the components of this solar system and then talk about how I designed and sized the system. So probably the most obvious aspect of our solar system is our solar panels. We have two 100 watt panels by Renogy, which I bought off Amazon, and they're installed on the roof. There's bolts that go through our fiberglass roof to plywood runners, which are on the underside of the ceiling, and this holds the panels in place to the entire roof. Now I had a lot of trouble deciding between traditional solar panels and the lightweight flexible solar panels which have become really popular online. And after reading a lot of reviews I decided to go with the reliability and the durability of the traditional panels. So we've had our panels for about six months and we've had great results. They were very cheap and even though they're traditional panels they're still very lightweight. So the panels are connected in parallel using MC4 connectors, which we bought off Amazon. So the positive wires of each solar panel are connected, the negative wires of each solar panel are connected. On the positive side, we also added a 20 amp MC4 connector fuse in order to protect our system from any power surges that would come from the solar panels. We also used red and black electrical tape to mark the positive and negative lines so there'd be no confusion when connecting them originally and also if we had to do any repairs down the road. So from the solar panels, the wires enter the van through the roof using a weatherproof adapter which we bought on Amazon. And once in the van, they're routed behind our cedar plank ceiling and then behind the walls to the charge controller. So our charge controller is a Renogy Rover 20 amp MPPT charge controller. And the charge controller acts as the brains of the whole solar system. It measures the charge on the battery and the voltage produced by the solar panels and thus regulates the current running from the solar panels to the battery to charge your system. The display on the charge controller allows us to know the percent charge of the battery, the voltage on the battery, the voltage produced by the solar panels, the current running from the solar panels to the battery, and the cumulative current that has been supplied by the panels to the battery. Our charge controller came with our panels from Renogy using a kit that we bought on Amazon. The charge controller is wired through another 20 amp blade fuse and then connected to our battery. Our battery is a 12 volt Duracell Ultra Platinum AGM deep cycle battery that stores about 100 amp hours of charge. We bought this battery at Batteries Plus, but I'll link a similar battery that you could get online in the description below. All our loads are wired directly off the battery. I've seen a lot of other videos or blogs where people have wired their loads directly from the charge controller. But I discussed this with a representative from Renogy and he recommended that all your loads come off the battery directly. So from our battery, all our loads are connected to a deep sea system six circuit fuse block. So our loads consist of four LED panel lights which are installed in our ceiling and are wired in parallel and on a dimmer switch. We also have the original fan from the original 1988 conversion, which I rewired for solar, and is controlled by a switch next to the light switch. We have a dual USB port, which is by Deep Sea Systems. Finally, we have a 400 watt power inverter, which we use for any of our devices that require AC. So these include our laptops, our camera chargers, my electric razor, and Courtney's electric shaver. As you can see, our system is very basic, but it has more than met our needs for the last five months, and it costs less than $1,000. The solar panels, mounting brackets, charge controllers, and the wires were all part of a kit from Renogy, which cost around $470. The MC4 connectors, fuses, and weatherproof adapter were about $45. Our 100 amp hour, 12 volt AGM deep cycle battery was about $230. The Blue Sea Systems fuse block, fuses, USB charger, and switches were about $110. The power inverter was $45, and the LED lights were $35. So altogether, this costs $935.
We also needed some miscellaneous items like wires, ring terminals, quick connects, and wire nuts. And this brought our total cost up to about $1,000. Now the easy part was putting all this stuff together. The harder part was actually designing it and figuring out what we need. But I found a lot of great resources online and I'll link the most helpful information below. Now a great place to start is to estimate your power requirements. Most electrical appliances are rated with their power consumption in a unit called watts. So if you take all the devices that you plan to power using your solar system and add them together, that will give you a good estimate of the maximum power that you'll require. So when we did this, we got about 110 watts. So we opted for a 200 watt panel system so that we would be able to power all of these devices at the same time if we ever needed to and so that we could scale up if we wanted to add some devices in the future. Now if your devices don't have the power listed in watts, they may show the current in amps and the voltage in volts and you just need to multiply these two together to get your wattage. The next thing you'll want to size is your battery. Taking the wattage that you estimated before, divide that by the voltage of the battery you expect to buy. So typically this would be a 12 volt battery. So we estimated 110 watts divided by 12 volts or approximately 10 amps. Now to get your amp hours, you just need to multiply by the number of hours you plan to run these devices without charging your battery. So for 10 amps, we could run for 10 hours on a 100 amp hour battery because 10 times 10 is 100. So if all our devices were drawing 10 amps, we could run this for 10 hours on a 100 amp hour battery because 10 times 10 is 100. Now you don't want to drain your deep cycle battery all the way to zero because this decreases the life of the battery. Instead you only want to drain it to about 50% maximum. So we should really only run all our devices drawing 10 amps for 5 hours if we have only a 100 amp hour battery. We thought it's pretty rare that we would ever need to run all our devices for five hours straight. So we thought a 100 amp hour battery is appropriate for our needs. The rest of your design depends specifically on your loads. And by doing a little research online and looking at the devices themselves, you can evaluate the size of the fuses and wires that you'll need for those loads. And I'll also link some information below that I found really helpful when I was doing this. So that's a brief overview of our simple DIY solar system. I'm not an expert, so please be sure to vet everything I say against other resources online, but hopefully this video helps you get over the fear of designing your system and into building it. Thanks.